You might have been noticing news over the past day or two that Portland has apparently been invaded by a large number of uh, very difficult to identify law enforcement officials, apparently from a variety of different uh, departments, and they have been interacting with the people of Portland in a variety of ways that many people find incredibly scary. Um, ways like this that might uh, bring to mind some of the videos we were playing early on in the uh, the civil rights protests. Across the street from the federal courthouse. This is the floor of the Bureau. Learning south of Southwest Main Street is closed. You must remain on the sidewalk on the north side of the If you enter the street or come south of Stanley, you will be arrested and subject to force. Stay to the north and stay back. Okay, so the reason that we kept that going after the cops just tackled a guy off of their bike rather than just stopping him um, was two, two reasons for me. One was the announcement that you'll be arrested and subject to force. Why is that a part of the thing that they're saying? You've got tons of people in riot gear. You're like, warning, we will, we will attack you. You'll be arrested, but probably attacked. And then the other was, if anybody has played um, Half-Life 2 back in the day, that audio recording sounded exactly like the dystopian like <laughs> government of that of that game yeah i was gonna ask like did you i mean i can't believe you chose to play that video do you have to pay royalties to whatever b movie post-apocalypse <laughs> nightmare that you took that from we'll like, see we'll see i'm waiting for like jude law to run out and be like hey you can't do that <laughs> exactly it's horrifying um yeah they they could have just stopped him but they didn't want to just stop him. That's the thing. Stopping him seems unnecessary since he's just riding a bike around. But they, they weren't satisfied to do that. They wanted to knock him off of it and into another object, maximizing the chance that he would be seriously injured as a result it, of that. It reminds me of a video that I saw on Reddit this week. But the only thing it has in common is like someone on a bicycle. There's a video on Reddit of uh, it's like a some kind of like surveillance video shot from under an overpass and there's kids riding bikes and this one kid is riding his bike and the other kid just pushes him over. Mm -hmm. The difference between the video you played in that video is the other video is somewhat gratifying because some bystander, like a, a man, gets up and just bops the kid in the face who did it. Yeah. You get some kind of sense of justice, you know, not to hurt him, but just to be like, don't do that. Yeah, there's no you don't see that anymore. You just see those folks getting encouraged. And exactly. and the more you the more you like unpack what's happening in that video and the statements that have been made by various law enforcement agencies and entities, um, the more frustrating and and hopeless it all sounds. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Especially when like, okay, there's the violence we just showed you. We've sort of become a bit numb to that since, you know, that's not as bad as some of the horrific videos we've had to watch. But then you see things like this, videos of uh, unidentified, unmarked, camo-clad men taking people off the streets and shoving them into, again, unmarked vans. What are you doing? Use your words, what are you doing? Use your words, what are you doing? Use your words. What is going on? Who are you? NLG will get you out. What's your name? Tell us your name. Okay, you're fine. We'll get you out. Bro, what? We got you, friend. We got you. NLG. You just violated their rights. Kidnapping people. You just violated their rights. Thanks for keeping. So, uh, it's got police on it, but they're not Portland police. Let's be very clear about that. They're not no, state they're not police state either. Police. They're just wearing, just wearing camo, camo and they and have, they a, have minivan. a minivan. You know, you're always afraid of big brother, but in this case, it's big soccer mom who grabs you and puts you in her minivan and drives you off to the, basically, the internment that is soccer practice. Like, it is horrifying. And then let's just do the counterpoint and then analyze what's happening. So the, the men in black are ostensibly police officers. Let's say they are police officers. We still don't know. Those might be the federal agents. But like, if those are police officers, I also want to give credit to like the mayor 
of Portland who is saying, I'm going to file a lawsuit. I'm going against Donald Trump and the federal agencies that are coming in here because they interfere with my ability to effectively police. But if that's how he's effectively policing, like now I am in this terrible, terrible situation that people unfortunately find themselves in a lot of the time where it's like, I think I, t I will take the lesser of yeah. these two evils when really no one should be knocking over somebody who's on their bicycle, mm -hmm. especially if that guy's just kind of riding around and so in, around the corner. And, and they keep saying that, for example, tear gas is illegal to use in Portland unless you declare a riot. Now, I've seen some areas where tear gas has been used as recently as July 13th after it was disallowed and there is by no means any riot in that thing where we just you just played where the man is getting arrested and the national lawyers guild person essentially says we'll get you out that guy th that is the opposite of a riot there was mm -hmm. nothing happening he was not in the middle of committing any crimes and there have been accounts from people who have been arrested who have been uh sharing their stories where they're never charged with anything. Yeah, They yeah. weren't doing anything. One guy says, I was essentially just dro riding my bicycle, and these guys took in me the in. Area. In, in the, the near, area. In the area. Near the area. Exactly, yeah. They say that they're protecting particular buildings, but it, that doesn't seem to actually be the case. And uh, it, there was a yeah. question um, from Cat Tower uh, in the comments saying, what were the plates on the minivan? And apparently the plates were Florida plates. Um, the minivans are just, they're just rented. They're not actual official law enforcement vehicles of any variety. They're just renting vehicles and shoving people into them. Um, and so by the way, re Florida really fast, man. Brett, hold on. I want to credit not, Dan McCarthy look. and Macha Chai for the first video and the second video for making those available so that people know what's actually going on there. Yeah. And it's not a mini, uh, it's not a Florida man. It's a Florida van in exactly. this situation. Even more. Florida ominous. van abducts rando Portlandia's. Yeah. as we've been labeling in Port Vandias. And you know, it, 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 it's, I, I, I understand that this is like a tangent or whatever, but um, when I saw this, you literally have cops or cops, soldiers, something, that okay. won't identify themselves. So you, you ask them directly, who are you working for? They won't identify themselves. That can grab you without giving any cause, and they can put you in a van, and they can just drag you off. And so just out of curiosity, because we, of course, in America, we have a long-standing, thriving conspiracy theory sort of right-wing media infrastructure that has been warning about black helicopters and secret military operations under Obama and things like that forever when they didn't actually exist. So this is on video. They're dragging people off the streets and shoving them in vans and just driving away. So I went to InfoWars. Nothing. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> they don't care at all. Like, this would be... And think about it, it's in their financial interest to get fired up about this because this seems to confirm the crazy things they've been saying. But no, they like it. They want those people in Portlandia to be brutalized. This is the this is the bottom floor of what they want to happen in Portland. Yeah, it's so weird. Everything that you would describe, I mean, the, the sat satire video writes itself, essentially. But, like, here's a Fox News headline. DHS accuses Portland officials of enabling mob post timeline of that damage by violent anarchists like that's it yeah. it is and it i mean but but fewer and fewer people are buying into this narrative which is a good thing more and more people are looking at trump's handling of all of this and going that is insane the people uh who run oregon and who run the city of portland are saying and it's also happening in seattle by the way those folks are saying you're escalating the situation by bringing these troops in because of course you are. Yeah. And also if you look, I mean, the language, we had a quote that I pulled for producing the story yesterday on Main Show, which was, there's like, the surge worked and they got the message. It's like, what are you talking about? I mean, it, it all has the trappings of bringing soldiers in to do things that like we're essentially originally complaining about the police not doing effectively. Now you're bringing in trained soldiers who are using, and maybe, it, I mean, we've, we've got people from uh, the military who've worked at TYT over the years who say, listen, we're trained not, not to do any of that stuff. But then you see how they're actually carrying out these directives. And the directive is, like one guy said, they pulled my ski mask down over my face so I couldn't see where I was going, and they drove me to an undisclosed location. Mm -hmm. He found out later that that location was a federal courthouse, but... But all of that, talking about surges, getting the message, pulling people's, like putting bags over people's heads and taking them to undisclosed locations. These are all war zone activities and it should come as no shock because these actual units 
are frequently deployed in Afghanistan. Yeah. Like exact, exact same units are doing this kind of stuff. And they are treating American citizens the way they're treating citizens of other countries. And then and sometimes, you know, the way they would portray those in a war zone. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, all of it's on purpose, of course. Like the, the governor is pointing out that this is just an election ploy. It's not that they desperately need to send in these you know, rando soldiers from all across the U.S. government, it's that they want to. Because Fox wants that footage. Because, again, it's the, it's that classic thing where you don't do the thing because you have to. You do it because if you do it and then show that it's been done, your fans will assume that it was justified. And so you overreact to what's happening in Portland, and then all the conservatives will be like, oh my god, Portland must be crazy. And Portland that's what they're doing. Crazy, but, like, a completely benign, slightly exactly. annoying crazy. Exactly. And they don't seem to care if people are horribly injured or lose their lives. You um, have over the weekend a protester was hospitalized in critical condition after being hit in the head by a less lethal round fired by an officer with the U.S. Marshals Service. Let's give you details on that individual. 26-year-old Donovan Labella suffered a fractured skull and required facial reconstruction surgery after he was apparently hit in the head by less than lethal munition. So that's he happening. Was- he had a speaker, so it wasn't like he was throwing rocks. He was throwing rock music. I guess, yeah. And to the uh, best of he, our knowledge... He's just holding a speaker over his head. Exactly. And you can hear that that's where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah. So supposedly these are, are people from deployed via DHS from six federal law enforcement agencies and departments, including, by the way, members of an elite Border Patrol tactical team, a special operations unit that is based on the U.S.-Mexico border and has been deployed overseas. The BORTAC members can be identified by patches on their camouflage sleeves. Well, you know, Portland, so crazy. We need people who've been trained to engage in shootouts with cartels, basically, so that the guy riding his bike can't get a couple feet further. That's what we need right now. So we're going to see what happens. The issue is that it's not like the situation can just resolve itself if the situation is designed to further a political narrative that the president seems to think will aid him in his re-election. For more political news, breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.